Today, we are going to be performing a comparison of the major lighting options in the indoor gardening industry. We're gonna collect data on both spectrum and PPFD. We're gonna talk about what these measurements are and most importantly, why they're important. We did this comparative study a few years back. We focused heavily on both spectrum and PAR. Now, as science catches up, they give us more tools and more effective ways of comparing how these lights perform, what they're gonna give us in our garden, and making sure that we make the best choice for our indoor growing needs. We're gonna be talking today using some acronyms that can be very, very confusing on how we actually measure light and what the measurement of light actually means to us as growers. The reason that it's so confusing is there's a lot of different ways that we can actually measure light. Ways we measure light that is good for humans, ways we measure light that is good for plants. So we're gonna talk about some of these measurements, what they mean, and why they're important. Photometry is defined as the science of measuring visible light in units that are weighted according to the sensitivity of the human eye. It is a quantitative science based on a statistical model of the human visual response to light, not a plant's physiological response. This most common measurement is called illuminance and is measured in lumens per square meter or lux. In a nutshell, photometry basically measures how we as humans perceive light, things like brightness. Now, radiometry is gonna go a little bit further and actually tell us about the energy within that light and how the plant is actually using that energy for the photosynthetic process. Radiometry is a method of measuring light based on its electromagnetic radiation, which is far more appropriate for quantifying how a plant would interact with that light. Plant biologists have designated light wavelengths from 400 to 700 nanometers as the range at which photosynthetic organisms are able to process light energy for photosynthesis. This measurement is referred to as a PAR reading, or photosynthetically active radiation. And again, it simply measures light radiation in this pertinent range. This was the data that we collected in our previous comparison video. While this measurement is a great indicator of a light's effectiveness, there is another that is widely used today as being an even better metric, and that is PPFD, or Photosynthetic Photon Flux Density. PPFD is a measurement of the number of photons in the 400 to 700 nanometer range received by the surface over a specified amount of time. The surface being a square meter, and the time frame being one second. So PPFD is measured in micromoles per meter squared per second. The reason this is a more appropriate way to measure light is because photosynthetic receptors in plants are activated by the photon itself, not the energy contained within that photon. According to photobiology, one photon excites one electron during photosynthesis. As growers, we all know how important both UV, which falls under 400 nanometers, and infrared, which falls above 700 nanometers, are for achieving record-breaking quality at harvest. In fact, it's one of the reasons Kind LED grow lights, which have incorporated these wavelengths into the light fixtures since their inception, have such amazing results. When choosing your grow light, you must consider this as a factor if the quality of your harvest is important to you. However, the reactions that plants have to these wavelengths is not primarily photosynthetic in nature and therefore not included in a PPFD reading. To differentiate between these very, very popular terms, PAR tells us how much overall energy is within the photosynthetic range. PPFD tells us the actual number of photons contained within that energy that is actually reaching your plants. Unfortunately, a PPFD measurement can be easily manipulated by lighting manufacturers. Because it is a spot measurement, the reading changes drastically based on height and location of where the reading was taken underneath the lamp. Now, a lighting manufacturer can cherry pick these readings and misrepresent the effectiveness of their actual product. So if you ever see a PPFD reading posted, but it's not disclosed how high or where that reading was taken, it's basically meaningless. Now we can see that it's frustrating that since companies are taking these measurements at varying points and heights, that it's hard to get a true apples to apples comparison. Because of this, we will be taking and showing readings from many different points within the overall footprint and posting them individually and as an average. This will give you the most accurate snapshot. Along with these readings, we're also gonna be taking a spectrometer readout. It's important to note that a spectrometer is also somewhat arbitrary in the sense that it gives you only 
the individual wavelength intensity in proportion to the overall spectrum of the lamp. It has no bearing on actual intensity. To demonstrate this, we will take a spectrometer reading of our adjustable K5 XL1000 with the red spectrum at 100%, 50%, 20% and at 0%. This clearly shows how the reading changes. The intensity of the blues and microspectra being emitted from the light were not increased, but they appear to in the readings because of the decrease in the intensity of the reds. The spectrometer reading by itself is therefore somewhat meaningless. In order to accurately gauge a light, the spectrometer reading must be coupled with the PPFD readings in order to paint a complete picture of the spectral range and quantity of the usable light radiation in the lamp. There are a number of other meaningful measurements we can take, but in order not to make this video any longer than it absolutely has to be, we're gonna stick with these two readings. Now we know what we're measuring, let's talk a little bit about how we're gonna measure these metrics. For this testing, we are going to be using the handy and convenient Lighting Passport Pro by Asens Tech. It links directly to a smart device and gives us instant readouts on a variety of metrics. Because we are using the same tool to measure each light, we will be able to obtain a true comparative analysis of these lights. I wanna introduce you to the lights that we're gonna be testing today, and as a fair comparison, the actual wattage that those light fixtures use. We chose these lights because we consider all of these LED fixtures to be legitimate lighting options. Many of the LED lights on this list will get you great results and help cut your energy costs as compared to traditional grow lights. Since growers have been reluctant to advance past traditional lighting options, we have also included a Gavita double-ended as well as a ceramic metal halide, also known as LEC, to demonstrate how well LED technology stacks up to the former standard. Let's go ahead and get to testing. This is a complete breakdown of every individual measurement location for each light. Pause the video to review if you like, but since this is an incredible amount of information to digest, let's take a look at the averages. Here you see a graph of the PPFD for each light at the center, inner ring, and outer ring readings at both 36 inches and 48 inches. Clearly, the Kind LED is leading the pack in the majority of these data collection points. In fact, Kind only fell out of the top spot in the outer reading at 36 inches. But let's take a look at the fixtures that filled out the top of this category. Two things to consider here. One, these top two fixtures have opted to spread their diodes out over a very large surface area, allowing for a bit more intensity on the perimeter. However, it seems to be coming at the expense of much needed intensity in the bulk of the footprint. Keep in mind that even with this sacrifice, they are still only 60 points higher than kind at this outer ring. Two, more importantly, these are white LEDs, and many of these photons will likely be reflected by the plant. PPFD measures all of the photons in the photosynthetic range. It does not discriminate against those wavelengths that are used in only small quantities by the plant, such as the greens and yellow spectra. Looking at the spectrum of these white light LEDs, you can see that much of their relative intensity is coming from these wavelengths. So how much of these 60 extra points will actually be utilized by the plant to begin with? Now let's take a look at the spectrometer readings from each of the lights we tested. You can clearly see which of these lights are considered white light fixtures based on the appearance of their spectrometer readings. The inclusion of the intense amount of green and yellow light gives these lights the appearance of brightness when perceived by the human eye. But this portion of the spectrum is largely ignored by the plant's photoreceptors. This is essentially recreating the inefficiency of traditional HID grow lights. Brightness does not translate directly into actual intensity. 
and it's easy to fall into this trap. Remember, the spectrometer reading is simply a graphical representation of the relative intensity of each included wavelength in the overall spectrum of the lamp, so it can be deceptive. Let's see these readings with their PPFD averages to show how the quality and efficiency of the light matches with their intensity. A light that has a nice spectrum without the necessary intensity will not perform well. There you have it, the raw data. I wanna take some time to remind you as the consumer that many grow lights have different recommended hanging heights associated with their fixtures. PPFD readings change dramatically at different distances. Our goal here is to do a fair side-by-side -side comparison, treating every light equally when taking our readings. So remember, if you were to lower the hanging height of any of the lights that we used in this test, the PPFD readings would increase proportionally to one another. While there are a few great options for LED grow lighting, Kind LED still ranks the best. Our perfect 12-band spectrum is fully providing for the comprehensive needs of your plants at an unmatched intensity. This is thanks to our simple but effective secondary optical lenses. Due to these lenses, Kind LED grow lights at 36 inches up have a higher PPFD a full foot below the canopy surface than most of the lights that we tested today have at the canopy surface itself. What does this mean? It means that fully developed fruits and flowers can be found through the entire plant when growing with these amazing lights. Again, there are a few great LED companies out there statistically outperforming other lighting options like Gavita Double-Ended or Ceramic Metal Halides, and we want to commend them for innovating and advancing this powerful and effective technology. But remember, Kind LED has now won the heralded Gear of the Year Award for LED lighting technology the last four years in a row. No other lighting company has maintained that top spot for that stretch of time. Kind was before the rest and still the best. We hope that you found this video informative, helpful, and it has aided you in making the proper grow light choice for all of your grows. We want to remind you that kind is kind to your plants, kind to you, and kind to the planet. Don't forget to check out what's trending at hashtag kindled. Thank you for watching.